subject is right out in our audience here at the El Capitan Theater in Hollywood. As you know, we uh, uh, go right into the audience, select our uh, principal subject. Remember this, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, person who is the principal subject on This Is Your Life never knows it until that time when he or she comes onto our stage. Mr. Edwards. So, uh, hello, Bombo. There's someone here that would like very much to meet you. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding? Jeanette McDonald, ladies and gentlemen. Jeanette Who here, ladies and gentlemen? This uh, seems to be a turning of the trick. This is a surprise on you, I hope. You have brought so much Isn't pleasure. she a doll? Isn't she a gorgeous no. gal? Jeanette McDonald, ladies and gentlemen. Where did you come from? <laughs> I came from the international officers who have asked me to present you with their plot. Oh, how it's very their creed wonderful. Because you have brought so much happiness to everybody throughout the country and an appreciation for that. They've asked me to give you this with their dogs. Oh, gee. Well, bless your heart. Thank you, Jeanette. Well, uh, uh, is, is, uh, uh, I, I know my wife is right. Is, is Jean in New York? Mm, yes, he's Good, in New I'll York. Good, I'll teach you Thank you. <laughs> uh, at any rate, I, uh, just want to say that knowing how, the thing I'm really flattered about, thank you, Optimus, I'm really very happy to have this plaque, but knowing how busy this gal is, Jeanette McDonald, she, uh, just, Finish a concert last I, night. Yes, but I haven't at the yet. Philharmonic. Oh, is it on tonight? No, last night I sang at the Philharmonic. Yes. But I'm leaving to. I know you're going on a big tour or something mm -hmm. like that. And I finish in Washington. But you see, now I'm going out front to watch you because I haven't had an opportunity to see you on television since I've been touring. Oh, how wonderful! So I'm. Oh, see, here. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what. Hold on, this just a minute. We might as well. Uh, here, I've been holding on to this thing for years. I'm going to get rid of it now. Wait a minute. <laughs> This is as good a chance as any, Bob, to get right here. I got something for you, uh, Jeanette. Oh. Jeanette McDonald. Oh, no. Huh? Huh? Well, now, this is a good surprise on me, huh? Yes. Now, let me tell you something, young yes. lady. This is the name of a show. Now, you've been busy on concert tours. Yes. This is a show that I have. This is a show you're on now. This is a show where we relive the entire life of a person who has done great and wonderful things mm -hmm. for the country. Uh... This says, this is your life, Jeanette MacDonald. This is your life now, and this is all a trick to get you here. Yeah! How about that? <laughs> Come on. This is a reverse Come sit here, will you, my dear? Oh, my, Jeanette. I'm afraid. Here, put my Optimus Creed over there. Thank you, Optimus. I'm really grateful to that. I thought I was being so clever. Listen, that seat is liable to be filled with a hundred people before oh, this show is over. Honey, right. put it there. Sorry. This here, you're the victim of a hoax. Uh, now, Helen Ferguson told you that you were to come here. <laughs> now she's looking uh -huh. at me. To come here to give me a plaque, see? And I'm deeply grateful for that. And that yes. plaque is real in the giving of it. Now, but now we're going to award you with a whole bunch of surprises. Right here, we have them in this book, and I, uh, I'm going to start right from the beginning and get to it. Okay, gal? Jeanette, here we go. Now, listen very carefully. We know all about you, my dear. Even to the neighbor, Mr. Matrix, who lived down the street from you in your childhood in Philadelphia. He says, you keep practicing, Jenny, and they'll clap for you at Carnegie Hall someday. Okay. Now, our clock turns backward now to the year 1947, a sad year for you, Jeanette, because it was then that you lost your beloved mother, Anna MacDonald, who had been your guide, your inspiration. Mm -hmm. 1945. Ready to go? Here we go, gal, with your life. This is the year of two of the happiest events in your life. You sing for the first time in the Hollywood Bowl, and does this photograph here mean anything to you? Why, it looks strange to me like my husband. It does? It does indeed. When he uh, a captain in it? Yes, yes when he came back. He's a major, I think. No, he's, he's Oh, yes, he got the two on there. there. Yes, when he, when he came back. Uh, Quite a from overseas. Now, you say, yes, that was a Lulu at that, wasn't it there? Well, listen, been gone that long. I don't blame you. Now, tell me this. Uh, where, uh, where is he now? He's in New York. In New York. Very busy with his many uh, he's television He's on a television shows. show tonight. Oh, good. Good. All right. Well, then, uh, are you... Uh, I tell you what, we sort of anticipated this, and we had him ready. Would you like to talk with him? Oh, yes. Huh? All right. Yes. We thought you'd get a kick. Now, this goes to New York right now. All New York is listening. Hello. Uh, Billy, is our New York call ready? All right. Uh, with Gene Raymond? Yes, put him on. Here's... Go ahead. 
Hello? Hello. Hello, Pappy. <laughs> Hello. Hi, <laughs> son. How are you? Hey, uh, how about this, huh? My face red. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a wonderful age we're living in. Here I am sitting watching you 3,000 miles away and talking to you on the phone. Well, you know, I'm not even sure of that. I wouldn't be surprised if you popped up here any minute, Wait, know? wait, turn in the camera. There. What watching. do you think I can do? Get on a, 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 a in this fast age? speed helicopter? In, in this age, anything can happen. <laughs> are you watching? Sure, I'm watching. Well, you now, look, look, you look you beautiful. This? What am I doing now? Oh, now, don't give me that. <laughs> <laughs> Waving at you. I think you look very lovely, Dan. Oh, thank you, sir. All right, I won't hold you up, because I know you got to go on with the show. I'll oh. call you right, or can you call me afterwards? Will you be home? Well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, naturally. <laughs> This age. <laughs> There'll be no late dates tonight. I'll wait for your call and make the date afterwards. All right, fine. <laughs> goodbye. Say goodbye, then. Is everything all right with Jean Jeanette? Yes, apparently so. <laughs> I'm sure it is. All right, now we must get on with our story. 1942. Now, uh, it's a lonely time for you, half a world apart, but you keep busy, you and Jean. Well, you especially keep busy. Jean's busy overseas, but you're making pictures, going on concert tours. And you visit army camps. You do something very unprecedented, really. You give your entire personal proceeds from 12 concerts. It was $96,462.89 to the Army Emergency Relief Fund. Now, how about that? <laughs> and, of course, you sing at uh, the Hollywood Canteen, and you're working with a serviceman. Speaking of the canteen, look at this, Jeanette, will you please? <laughs> Oh, I remember that boy. Yes, you're quite... His name was Verl Cowley. Is that so? Taylor. Oh, that was a hot oh, number, wasn't it? I bet it was a surprise to Jeanette McDonald to find herself learning uh, jitterbugging with that sailor. Huh? <laughs> and it was uh, sure a surprise to that sailor to find himself teaching jitterbugging to Jeanette McDonald. Now, who do you suppose that is, Jeanette? Well, just, just look over here to our Hazel Bishop Archway, and here's your jitterbugging sailor, Verl Cowling of Huntington Beach, California. <laughs> Congratulations. Well, now, look, you kids have a lot to talk about, and if you want a jitterbug, well, you could do that, too, you know, <laughs> no, for all Lang Syne. You just go uh, right ahead there if you want to. We'll come back to the song-filled life of Jeanette McDonald in just a moment. Now, you take a leave of absence from making pictures to embark on your first American concert tour. Among the thousands who listened and fans your concerts was one who had not only been a fan, but a friend of yours uh, for many years standing. I couldn't believe that this was the same Jeanette whose curls I used to see bobbing up and down as she ran out of school and hurried over to Schilling's ice cream hall. <laughs> well, there's a voice in the past, Jeanette. Who could that be? I don't know who it is, but I know Schilling's ice cream. <laughs> yes. Well, it belongs to a lady who taught you English in the seventh grade at the Dunlap School in Philadelphia, Miss Edna Clear, now of Ocean City, New Jersey, and here she is. <laughs> Well, Miss Claire, you must have been proud to see your favorite English pupil all growing up in a movie and concert star, eh? Well, Mr. Edwards, I never doubted that Jeanette would be a great success, for she was one of the most brilliant pupils I ever saw. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> and it's a wonderful thrill for a school teacher to find one of her former pupils making good. Oh, that's oh, great. All you school teachers. You know, I'll tell you a little secret about Miss Clear. When we kids used to, you know, play school, yes, huh? I always had to be Miss Clear. <laughs> oh, <laughs> because oh, I didn't know she that. was my favorite teacher. I didn't love her so. Will you take your place over there in Jeanette's path? Yeah, yeah. While we go on with our lives. Back we go, Jeanette. Back to the dazzling parade of motion uh, pictures that set the name of Jeanette McDonald to heavenly music. Nelson Eddy. New Moon also with Nelson Eddy. San Francisco with Clark Gable. Bitter Sweet, the great Noel Coward success. The Girl of the Golden West. Remember Nolly? And of course, yes, a 
Sweetheart, with your great co-star, Nelson Eddy. Now it's June 16, 1937. The calendar of your life stands at what's the most important date of all. You're at the Wilshire Methodist Church in Los Angeles. Do you remember Jeanette? Mm-hmm. Yes, that's the man who performed the ceremony that united you in marriage with Jean Raymond, the Reverend Dr. Wilkie Martin. Dr. Martin? Here. <laughs> we were talking about you only last night. Oh, it's not wonderful. Yes, we were talking about you. Mrs. Beheimer came backstage to see me at my recital, and she said you and Mrs. Martin were not able to come because Mrs. Martin hadn't been very well. And I'm sorry, but it's so nice to see you. I imagine that's one wedding you won't forget. That's, uh, that's right, uh, Ralph. Yes. I won't forget it. Well, it, was a, it was a beautiful wedding, uh, Jeanette, and a memorable one. Well, it's one I won't forget. <laughs> you know, Ralph, I have a particular thrill and a sense of exaltation with every couple that I marry. And uh, especially when the couples like uh, Jeanette and Jean uh, show in their life the philosophy of the holy bonds of matrimony, I, I have a particular thrill and a great gratification. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you, Dr. Martin. Now, if you'll just take your seat there, please. Thank you, sir. In Jeanette's past, we've got a lot of ground to cover. It's 1935, the year this wonderful romance began. How'd you and Jean actually meet, Jeanette? Well, it's been published a lot, but we met on a doorstep. We were both going to a party. We were each going to a party. Yes. And uh, I arrived at the door just a little ahead of Jean. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> he whistled at me. Now, this is... Oh, awesome. the wolf. He did. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> and I turned around and looked. And I've never been able to live that down. Oh, yes. Anyway, he came up to the step and he said, Oh, how nice for us to be here together. He introduced himself to me. And I said, I'm Jeanette McDonald. Yes, I know. So then the hostess opened the door and said, Oh, how nice of you to come together. Yes. Well, we hadn't at all. But, uh, as a matter of fact, we didn't see each other again that evening because he was interested in somebody else at the party. Oh, well. You mean that, that you and your husband have never been formally introduced then? No. Well, think of that. I think after 15 years of married life, it's time you two were introduced to each other. Uh, Mr. Gene Raymond, uh, you, you, you should meet, you see. Mr. Gene Raymond, may I present Mr. Gene Raymond here to see you. I couldn't see what you were doing, though. That's <laughs> 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 you belong here. You sit over here, boy. Uh, it's it's the Jeanette's <laughs> life now. I know this is an exciting moment for both of you, but we still have a long way to go here on our journey of surprises. So I tell you what, Jean, you just sit there. And here we go, back through the years. Well, it's 1935, and here in Hollywood, Metro Golden Mayor had the greatest box office team in history, Jeanette McDonald and... Nelson Eddy. Your first picture together was... That's right, Naughty Marietta and that box office smash was quickly followed by... Another street classic, Rosemary. And before that, there... Uh -huh. The haunting Viennese love story, The Merry Widow with Maurice Chevalier. with Maurice Chevalier. The Vagabond King with Dennis King. You're remembering all the things? Oh, yeah. Monte Carlo followed One Hour With You, Love Me Tonight. We've been showing the audience pictures of oh, you all during this time. Yes, Jeanette, that is your film career, and I know one of your sorrows is that your father, who passed away in 1924, never got to see his celebrated daughter become a star. But long before you ever faced the camera, you were a star on Broadway. Jeanette didn't achieve stardom on Broadway without a lot of hard work and preparation, Mr. Edwards. Well, I wonder oh, I who that's... Who that one, huh? I know who that is. That is the person who crystallized your ambitions to become a singer. <laughs> she was your first singing teacher, and you still study with her today. Yes. Grace Adele Newell of New York and oh, Hollywood. Yes. Hello. 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 
We traveled 3,000 miles together. <laughs> and the other is today, Mr. General, yes, Miss because of her determination, her stick-tortiveness, and great loyalty. And you. And she has never stopped studying. Oh, that's great. Yeah, and uh, before you took this young lady as a pupil, you laid down some uh, pretty strict uh, rules of conduct, didn't you? I certainly it? did. I told her <laughs> that she couldn't have any drinking, no gallivanting, no, no smoking. And no. you know what Mr. Lubitz used to call her when she'd come on the set during the making of the love oh, parade? Oh, no, don't. don't, don't. <laughs> what, what, Jeanette? He used to call her my moral teacher. <laughs> well, Jeanette, you and Mr. Yule will all have a chance to get together at the party Hazel Bishop is giving you at the famous bit of Sweden on the sunset trip here in Hollywood. Uh, manager Fred Glow will be looking for you and we'll be on our way right after the show. Hi. <laughs> well, it's 1922 now, and you, Jeanette, are a busy, busy girl in New York. You're dancing on the stage in hit musicals, you're going to school and singing in the church choir on Sunday. Do you remember how you got your first job on Broadway, Jeanette? Well, that's my sister Blossom. It, your big <laughs> sister Blossom, now a distinguished actress in her own right, Marie Blake. This is... <laughs> Jeanette, that first job on Broadway, anyhow. Well, you see, Ralph, she was just 13 years old. Yes. And she kept teasing me to mm -hmm. take her down to audition for Ned Wayburn, the man whose show I was then working in. Sure. See? Well, remember that? How Very. scared you were? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, she kicked too high, she fell in the orchestra pit. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and she climbed back up on the stage and started to sing. Well, bless her remember? heart. Remember? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... Well, Wayburn uh, hired her anyhow, you see. Yes, but you know what? No, what? The reason she got the job? What? Because he thought she'd be a good a good comic. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you like that? Well, I oh. might add I was all dressed up in my sister's clothes. <laughs> <laughs> what a start in professional show business for a gal who at the age of three made her debut as a singer at the Tenant Memorial Presbyterian Church, right? In uh, Philadelphia at the Church Social. Uh -huh. Oh, 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 oh. 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 Yes. <laughs> well, Elsie, Mrs. Uh, Bernard Scheiter, what do you do now? I have a studio of dance in Upper Derby, Pennsylvania. Well, good yes. for you. Oh, if you'd only known that when you were studying it. Oh, well, that was later. You go over there, you two wonderful sisters, and sit in Jeanette's path, and we'll see you at the party later. <laughs> well, Jeanette, this is your life, and what a wonderful life, a life full of music and laughter and kindness and love. The love of your family and your many, many friends. The love of your husband. Of course, uh, you remember Jeanette and Jean at your wedding as you knelt together the song that was sung by an old friend, a dear friend. Oh. Them, don't? Oh, thanks, thanks, thank you very much. You know something? What? Uh, when we were outside parking the car, Helen Ferguson, <laughs> who brought me over, I must tell you this. Yes. 
the man who, well, he, she said, where can we park Miss McDonald's car? He said, over there beside Nelson Eddy. <laughs> about this, and don't you think we weren't scared? Look, honey, we've got to get on here. Tell her, tell her, Nelson, what you want. All right, Ralph. Well, and Jeanette, uh, uh, I may call you Jeanette, may I? <laughs> uh, that's all right, old man. I give you my permission. <laughs> of all the wonderful moments our association has brought me, the one that I remember with the greatest warmth is when I had the pleasure of singing at your wedding. Well, and... Nelson, what can I say, except that this is one of the highlights, certainly, of our wedding, and we'll never forget it. Well, yes, bless you. you. You're going to have a lot of time to talk. Right I now. say again, God bless you both. Hazel Bishop is sending to that hospital a beautiful Westinghouse 21-inch screen television set that provides unsurpassed clarity and brilliance with freeway picture perfection. And for you, as befits a truly great lady, Hazel Bishop wants you to have this beautiful uh, bull of a diamond wristwatch from America's great manufacturer. Your bull of a watch is engraved so as your appearance on This Is Your Life will be with you for a lifetime of happy memories. And here's a surprise that I know will especially please you because you're always encourage young singers uh, for your concert in Carnegie Hall this coming January 16th. Hazel Bishop has purchased 50 tickets and they'll be distributed free of charge to talented young singers selected uh, by the New York Conservative Music. See? And so that you can be surrounded by your family and friends here, you'll have a sound film of this show. Well, oh, Jeanette McDonald, this is your life. A life that has been a